Hi guys, the next Coolify service that we're going to be self-hosting is called NextCloud. NextCloud is an open source alternative to Google Drive or iCloud. I think it's pretty obvious why you would want to host NextCloud, so I won't go into that. But I will show you what it looks like once you have self-hosted it by the end of this video. You will get your NextCloud instance that looks like this with the apps that we will have installed for NextCloud. And all this data is going to be saved on the server that you're hosting it on. So let me show you how to self-host it. We're going to go into Coolify, add in the Projects tab, hit the Add button here. I'm going to call it Next Cloud. Hit Continue. Select the Production Environment. Hit Add a New Resource. And then search for Next Cloud in the search bar here. And you have the option of choosing what database you want to use with Nextcloud. Your files will not be saved on this database that you choose. They will be saved on a data directory. But I believe this is for any settings or things like that that are specific to Nextcloud. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the Postgres database. Select the server you want to, where you want to host it on. And now we are almost done. Before we hit Deploy, and this is the crucial step, we're going to hit Edit Compose File. And when we scroll down here, you can see that the data directory, which is where our files are going to be saved, is actually mapped to the container itself. So this doesn't make much sense, because this means that Docker is going to manage the data. And so if we have, let's say, an old computer that, it's, uh, that we're hosting Nextcloud on, you won't actually be able to directly access that data that you've uploaded on the computer. You'd have to only access it through the Docker container, if that makes sense. So we're going to change this so that it's on the server host. So let's delete this, and we're going to type in type bind, because we're going to use a bind mount, which is basically saying that we're going to bind a specific location on the server computer to the Docker container. So we're going to type in source, and the location is going to be dot slash data. And I'm going to show you in a bit where that is exactly. And then the target is also going to be slash, but without the dot, just slash data. And this is a um, Coolify specific property. We're going to say is directory true. And so now let's hit save. And now we can hit deploy. So now our container has started. Let's go ahead and close this window. And as we can see here, the service is healthy as well, which is perfect. Before we visit the link, let me show you where we have mapped that source directory earlier in the Docker Compose file, where we wrote source dot slash data. But to show you, I'm going to open a terminal tab so you can uh, command click this to open it up in a new tab. I've already done that here. So I'm going to connect to my server. And right here, we're going to cd into slash data slash coolify slash services. And here, we're going to enter in this string right after the dash. This is the ID of the container itself, I believe. So we're going to copy that, paste that here, and hit Enter. And now we are in the directory where our Docker Compose file is located. And so when you enter in dot slash, it's actually relative to where this Docker Compose file is located. So this is why we have our data directory here. So I can CD into data, and you can see that it, some files have already been added. So we're going to CD out of it. And in fact, we no longer need this window, so I'm going to close it. And now, Let's visit the URL. So we're greeted with our onboarding journey here. Let's go ahead and add in a login and password. And here you can select what recommended apps that you want to use. So just go ahead and install all the recommended apps. And now we're almost done. This is basically just um, a pop up before you actually get to access the web app. We're already in the web app. So you can go through this if you like. It shows you you know that you can download a desktop app or mobile on Android or Apple. So that's cool. So I'm going to close this. 
and now we have successfully self-hosted Nextcloud. And crucially, we have mapped the data directory to be on our server computer and not on the Docker container itself, which is pretty useless in my opinion. So that's going to be it for this video. I'm not going to go over the applications that Nextcloud has because there's plenty of videos on YouTube that does this already. And I think that they will do a much better job of doing that. So I will see you in the next video.